Greetings and salutations, this is read aloud, a text-to-speech voice reader, an extension add-on for Firefox browser, and this is a scripted wiki for all jumping flash games for the PlayStation 1, prepared by Invisible the Non-Existent, and I shall read it as an information video. Shall we begin? Jumping Flash Jumping Flash Jenping Gyutaris Hu Aroha Dance Haku Fanki Daisakasen no Maki, is a video game released in 1995 for the Sony PlayStation. It was developed by Exactco, Limited and Ultraco, LTD, and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. Jumping Flash Was re-released in the PlayStation Store as a downloadable game for the PlayStation Portable and PlayStation 3. Developer Exact, Ultra Publisher Sony Computer Entertainment Platforms PlayStation Release Date 1JP, April 28, 1995 2 NA, November 1, 1995. 3 EU, September 29, 1995. Genre First person platformer. First person shooter. Plot An evil and demented astrophysicist named Baron Aloha has removed giant pieces of land from the crater planet using his gigantic land lifting machines to turn it into his own private resorts. Aloha has also removed and hidden away the jet pods that propel each world. As the residents of Crater Planet call for help, the Universal City Hall sends one of their agents, a robotic bunny named Robert, to find the jet pods, stop Aloha, and save Crater Planet from emptiness. Aloha surrounds himself with creatures called Mew Mews, small, white, five-limbed creatures with palm trees on their heads. Many of the game's full motion videos feature the Mew Mews in an izakaya, humorously recounting their defeat at the hands of Robert. Gameplay the gameplay in Jumping Flash is noted as being nearly identical to Geograph Seal, an earlier game by the same developer released in 1994 for the Sharp X68000. The game is presented in a first-person perspective, and the player can freely walk in three-dimensional space and rotate the camera in any direction. The user interface resembles that of viewing through Robert's eyes. The top part of the screen shows the time remaining, the player's score, and Kumigoro, Robert's sidekick who offers the player warnings and hints. The top left shows firework items, while the top right contains the radar, showing the location of various objects including enemies, power UPS, jet pods, and enemy projectiles. The bottom is filled out with a health meter on the sides with the number of lives in the center of it. A screenshot from the first level showing the general interface. The core of the gameplay is centered around the player's ability to make Robot jump. Robot can jump up to three times, once off of a surface and twice in mid-air, allowing him to reach extreme heights. Unlike other platform games which continue to face horizontally when the player jumps, Jumping Flash tilts the camera downwards when a double jump or triple jump is performed to allow the player to see Robert's shadow and easily plan a landing spot. Jumping chains can be performed using enemies and some projectiles. The player has the ability to shoot a low-powered beam where a target indicator is centered in the middle of the screen. In addition, the player can find and use special items for Robert in the form of fireworks to do massive damage to enemies, which include cherry bombs, rockets, roman candles, and twisters. Other power UPS scattered across each world come in the form of picture frames representing carrots to extend Robert's health, extra lives, timeouts that stop the clock and freeze all the level's dynamics for a few seconds, power glasses that extend the player's time, and power pills that make Robert invincible for a short amount of time. Coins worth points can also be picked up by destroying enemies. The enemies are often of animal-like creatures such as kiwis and penguins, but also robots and plants. Most have simple actions such as wandering around aimlessly, shooting or throwing projectiles out randomly. A few, however, have more intelligence such as the bomb-forming beetles or missile-shooting pigs. Jumping Flash is composed of six worlds with three levels each, totaling 18 main levels, of which there are seven boss levels and an extra six bonus stages available. In the main levels, the objective of the first two levels of each world is to collect four jet pods with the letters E, X, I, and T on them. After collecting them, landing on the exit pad is all that remains in finishing the level. The third level in each world is a boss fight. The level designs vary, from Egypt-style desert to a roller coaster-filled theme park. While most of the levels are large outdoor excursions, two of the game's levels are enclosed within a narrow interior and are somewhat maze-like. The hidden bonus levels feature various blocks with balloons in them, 
popping the balloons yields either coins or power-ups. A time attack mode is available for any level the player has completed. Upon completing the 18 main levels, the levels can be played again with objects rearranged and a more difficult setup. Development The main concept of jumping flash was borrowed from Osamu Tezuka's experimental animation jumping. Tetsuji Yamamoto, producer at SCE, wanted to turn the floating feeling present in Tezuka's animation into video game form. To put his plan into action, Yamamoto teamed Exact, who had previously made Geograph Seal for the Sharp X68000, up with Ultra, who were quite famous at the time for having done the CG for the popular Japanese television show Yugo Yugo Ruga, and tasked them with making his idea become a reality. Music The music for Jumping Flash was composed by Takeo Miratsu. Many of the tracks were included with tracks from Jumping Flash 2, which Miratsu also composed, on the Jumping Flash 2 original game soundtrack. The soundtrack was published by Antinos Records in Japan in 1996. Reception and Legacy Jumping Flash Received positive review scores after its release, including a 4.1-5 from GamePro, a 4 fifths from Next Generation Magazine, and an 8.6-10 from Electronic Gaming Monthly. The game was scored a 34 out of 40 by Famitsu, ranking it among the magazine's top 120 game of all time in 2000. IGN's original review gave Jumping Flash a 7.5-10, stating that despite some of the relatively small worlds and easy difficulty, it is a great, genre-pushing game. Game Revolution cited the same complaints, but calls the graphics mind-blowing and the game itself totally unique, giving it an A score. Albert Kim of Entertainment Weekly stated, perhaps the most euphoric sensation comes at the height of a turbocharged jump, when you can look below and see the world quietly slip away. Despite its innovation and critical acclaim, other 3D platformers such as Super Mario 64 would go on to become a standard for the genre. In 2007, Matt Kazamasina of IGN described Jumping Flash as the third most underrated video game of all time. Jumping Flash did manage to produce a few sequels. Jumping Flash 2, also developed by Exact, was released worldwide on PlayStation a year later. Two loose sequels, Robot Mon View on PlayStation and Pocket Mew Mew compatible with the Pocket Station, were released exclusively in Japan by Sugar and Rockets. Sugar and Rockets Sugar and Rockets Incorporated, Kabushiki Kaisha Shugandorokitsu, formerly known as Exact, was a second-party Japanese computer software company of Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporated, founded on October 14, 1997. On August 1, 2000, Sugar and Rockets merged with SCEI, a subsidiary of Sony, and as such, the company no longer exists. They were associated with the creation of Pocket Mew Mew and Robot Mondeo. Trivia: One, they have also developed several other games, such as Ghost in the Shell and Covered Ops, Nuclear Dawn. Chase the Express in Europe and Japan. Universal City Hall The Universal City Hall, Shiyakusho, is a part of the Series S universe. As dire situations occur, they are most often immediately contacted, even for the smallest tasks, as shown in Robot Mondeo. Not much is actually known about them except that Robot has been dispatched from them in all three games. They tend to refer Robot as one of their agents, meaning there is more than just Robot, in Robot Mondeo there are more agents similar to him. They tend to address him as a he. It is not clear whether the spaceship in the beginning of all games is the Universal City Hall itself or merely a part of it. Jumping Flash 1 As the opening movie rolls, the astrophysicist named Baron Aloha went through the plan of removing giant pieces of land from the crater planet using his land-lifting machines to turn them into his own private resorts. Aloha also took and had hidden away the jet pods that propel each world. The residents of Crater Planet were forced to call for help from Universal City Hall and they send one of their agents, Robert, to find the jet pods, stop Aloha, and save Crater Planet from emptiness. Jumping Flash 2 After Robert having beaten Baron Aloha and ruined his plans to take over Crater Planet in the first game, Aloha runs for his life and returns to his home planet, Little Mew. But while planning his revenge, Aloha is confronted with an attack that frightens all the Mews as he could only stare. A alien invader known as Captain Kabuki was floating above Little Mew and started taking it apart, piece by piece, just as Aloha himself had once tried to do to Crater Planet. Aloha flees the onslaught in his space pod, and lands on an asteroid far away from Little Mew, 
where he swallows his pride and calls for help from Universal City Hall to get help from Robert. Once again, Robert is dispatched to help by Universal City Hall. Robert Monview. Since there was no main villain in this game, the main focus, rather than taking down someone's plot down, was to help the citizens of Hanauma go through small tasks and jobs. Robert had been painted gold by the Universal City Hall. Even though there were no main villains in this game, a threat from outer space had appeared as a final mission and the Universal City Hall had dispatched not only Robert, but two other comrades to help along. But as the fight goes along, the other dispatched agents were ravaged and unconscious, one crash landed in a piece of floating land and another just floating unconscious. You can get one only spare Roman candle if you make a leap of faith towards the crash landed one and try to examine him, but he will not respond. The Universal City Hall always makes an appearance on each game's ending, most likely in closing the adventure as Robert comes back to their facilities. Robert Robert, Robito, is a robotic rabbit employed by Universal City Hall to deal with various problems throughout a specified sector of the galaxy. It is hard to determine if Robert has a gender, its unblinking red eyes and expressionless face lending no hints towards a male or female personality. That said, Universal City Hall refers to Robert as a he. Robert's strengths include the ability to triple jump high into the air on a pair of electromagnetic, spring-activated legs, fire an unlimited stream of bullets from his sparkle beam gun, and collect and activate numerous weapons. Robert also comes equipped with a support AI that appears in his heads-up display as a springy, vaguely bear-esque hood ornament. It indicates how high Robert has jumped and if danger is nearby and also offers hints and tips on what to do next. Through the course of the first two games Robert's design changes little with only some refinements in overall geometry. For the third game, Robert Monview, Robert is painted gold, has slightly more expressive eyes and gets a sleeker, smaller design. Throughout his battles with his brave deeds net him hyperbolic praise from the narrator who dubs him a freedom-loving, robo-heroic, battle bunny and a high-octane, multidimensional heroic robo-bunny. Baron Aloha Aloha Jean Peperovich Macadamian 13, Aroha Jan Peperovich Macadamian 13 SEI, better known by his title Baron Aloha, Aroha Dance Haku, is the main antagonist of the Jumping Flash series. A curmudgeonly mad scientist and noble hailing from the planet Macadamia, he is bent on world domination and frequently clashes with Universal City Hall's robotic agent Robert in his quest for power. He resides on the tropical planet Little Mew, where he rules over the Mew Mew species and enlists their help in creating his diabolical contraptions. History Before Jumping Flash Baron Aloha was born on the planet of Macadamia, raised alongside a younger sister by his mother and father. He exhibited incredible skills with science and machinery in his youth, with one of his early inventions being a fully automatic forward flicking machine. At age 16, he would one day wake up and come to realize that he was destined to become an evil scientist, which led him to stage multiple attempts to take over Macadamia, though none of them ever succeeded. By the time he had turned 19, he was banished from his home planet. At an unspecified point in time, Aloha came across the frosty planet of Little Mew. Weaponizing a virus, he subjugated the planet and made it his base of operations, turning it into a sunny paradise in the process. He also forced the Mew Mews to go through a harsh education in order to learn how to build and operate machines so they could eventually assist in his evil plans. Jumping Flash Baron Aloha, desiring a vacation spot for himself, constructs a series planetary excavation robots called Karagaraji to cut off sections of the humble crater planet to serve as holiday retreats, and they soon become overrun with his many henchmen. The citizens of the planet call for help from Universal City Hall, who dispatch their best pest control robot Robert. However, Aloha has hidden the jet pods that propel each piece of land, and Robert must locate and collect all four in each world to save the planet's lands. After clearing World 5, the Baron boasts to Robert about a secret machine that he has created in the event all his others would be destroyed, and in the last stage of World 6, it is revealed as a robot version of himself named Aloha Robo, equipped with all sorts of dangerous weapons. As the robot meets its demise, Baron Aloha tells Robert that he has yet to truly take out his bases. And that his minions are really ready for him, thus initiating extra mode. Robert goes through each world once again, and upon making it through extra 5, Baron Aloha exclaims that Aloha Robo's energy has been restored and that he is unstoppable. Robert proves victorious a second time through, which causes the evil genius to make a getaway on his tiny ship and vow to get revenge as he hollers, as long as science still exists in this world, I'll be back.
Goodbye. Until we meet again. After the credits have finished, a short extra scene shows an unhappy Aloha walking into the Izakaya Oahu, and upon seeing all his minions slacking off, he angrily asks what's all this. Jumping Flash 2. Following his defeat by Robert, Baron Aloha flees back to Little Mew to plan more evil deeds. As he plots by the poolside, a large shadow emerges and the planet begins to rumble, causing him and his Mew Mews to look to the sky in fear. The menacing Captain Kabuki has found yet another planet to bottle up and add to his collection, and begins tearing up Little Mew. Aloha escapes in the nick of time with a single Mew Mew sidekick in his small spaceship, and lands upon a tiny asteroid conveniently carrying a telephone booth. Swallowing his pride and taking advantage of the perks of paying his taxes, he asks Universal City Hall for assistance, to which they send Robert to help save Little Mew. After each world is saved by Robert, cutscenes show the Baron reacting to his progress. Instead of rooting for the hero's triumphs, he instead complains about how well he is doing, getting angry with his sidekick for expressing joy that Robert has come to save them and hoping the bunny meets his demise. After World 5, his sidekick finally repairs his ship and two go to spectate the showdown between Robert and Kabuki. Upon Kabuki's defeat, Robert lands near the Izakaya Oahu where Aloha and the rest of the Mew Mews have congregated to celebrate. Aloha tells Robert, J.A., J.A., good butt kicking, hair hoss and pfeffer, and offers to give him something to drink, before muttering to himself, or perhaps you'd like my Robert Smasher. As the liberated citizens of Little Mew chant Robert's name in support of him, the annoyed Baron yells at them to be quiet. After the narrator's closing words, an extra scene shows Kabuki being put on a leash by the scientist, who tells him that he'll be working for him now and wants no complaining about it. At the beginning of the extra mode campaign two faces of Baron Aloha, Baron Aloha taunts Robert, stating his intent to rule the galaxy and reintroducing him Captain Kabuki, who smugly replies, Oh, but we've met, haven't we bunnykins? After extra 5, Aloha tells Robert to prepare to meet your doom, as he sends Kabuki after him. Kabuki is swiftly defeated and humiliated yet again, causing Baron Aloha to yell at Robert and threaten to get the better of him next time as he zips away into space. Once the credits have run their course, another extra scene shows the disgraced mad scientist walk into the Izakaya like he did in the first game, weakly attempting to apologize to the Mew Mews for his behavior. His poor apology isn't accepted, and the Mew Mews insult and boo him as the screen fades to black. Personality Baron Aloha is a selfish and cunning individual who never hesitates to stoop low to achieve his goals. Willing to backstab even those who help him and recruit those who once menaced him, he demonstrates that those around him are either pawns in his schemes or enemies to be wiped out. The only characters he shows much fondness for are the Mew Mews, as even though he tends to boss them around, many promotional artworks depict him hanging out and doing things with them, implying he does like them to some extent. Aloha also shows a predilection for anything tropical, which manifests itself in numerous ways, from his summary makeover of Little Mew to his collection of 5,000 Hawaiian shirts. Aloha possesses great scientific knowledge and uses it to create various technologies for himself. While many of his creations are combat robots that he sends to fight Robert, he also has made more mundane things, such as a high-performance laptop that can play 3,000 different games, including Go and Othello, and even his very own monocle. His status as a scientist also ties into his opinions on marriage, to which he believes no evil scientist, himself included, should be Wednesday however, he seems to not mind being admired by women, as when a 42-year-old beauty confessed her love to him in a Q&A, Aloha turned her down but requested her address, phone number, a photo of herself and her bust waist hip measurements. In the second game, the Baron undergoes something of a shift in personality. While he still remains self-centered and devious as ever, he is far more irritable and frustrated than he was in the first game, where he was vastly more confident and egotistical. He also speaks with a stereotypical German accent, which accentuates both his anger and his chosen occupation. Trivia 1. In the manual to the US edition of Jumping Flash 2. Baron Aloha speaks to the reader through the first few pages, telling them the story and teaching the player how to control Robert. Amusingly, he retains his accent he has in the actual game, which means things like special weapon become special viapon, among others. Mew Mew the veritable co-stars of the Jumping Flash series, the Mew Mew, Mumu Mu Hoshibito, are aliens from the planet Little Mew who are unwillingly or at least unknowingly tied to the mad scientist, Baron Aloha. Overview Mew Mews are tribal, 
Two limbed aliens from the backwater planet of Little Mew who look vaguely squid-like in design but with a vibrant palm tree on their heads and simple black dots for eyes. They first appear in the original Jumping Flash. In 1995 and serve as either slaves, henchmen, or unwitting sidekicks to the antagonist, Baron Aloha. Their relationship is never extensively detailed, appearing to be foreboding bodyguards in one scene but ultimately shunning Baron Aloha when his plans fail at the end of Jumping Flash. 2. Personality and Evolution Jumping Flash Throughout the original Jumping Flash, Mew Mew are most prominently seen in cinematics between levels where a sorely worked over, and whiny, Mew Mew meets his compatriots at a Japanese bar. Though they are clearly eating yakitori and meat buns with sake cups, pitchers, and beer bottles in hand, the US version of the game refers to their drinks as root beer physis. The Mew Mews sound fairly unintelligible with only two voice actors, Laura Liking, Alan Marriott, doing their English lines which mostly sound like slackjaw gibberish. Jumping Flash 2. In Jumping Flash 2, the Mew Mews are seen more frequently than Robert himself. From the box art and manual to the title screen, Mew Mews even replace the floating jet pods that Robert must collect to exit the stage. Four Mew Mews are scattered throughout every stage, each holding a sign with one letter that spells EXIT. In game they speak like a Pokemon only saying their species title, Mew Mew but during cinematic scenes they speak fluent and less slack-jawed English. The starring Mew Mew of the game chides and jabs with Baron Aloha about Robert's progress, the Baron's spaceship which it is trying to repair, and the successfulness of Captain Kabuki, the intergalactic monstrosity that's not too far removed from the king of all cosmos. The Mew Mews appear again in Robert's third adventure, Robert Mondeo, joining an expanded cast of alien characters. They also received their own spin-off game, Pocket Mew Mew, a collection of mini games and utility apps that was playable only on the Pocket Station device. Trivia 1. In the English language instruction manual for Jumping Flash, the voice actors are credited as playing Moo Moo. The canonical spelling of Mew Mew wasn't established until the opening shot of Jumping Flash. 2. 2. The games were created and coded by Exact, but most, if not all, of the characters were designed by a small Japanese design group coincidentally known as Mew Mew Co., Ltd. Jumping Flash 2 Jumping Flash 2 Jenping Yuvarus Hu Tsuaroha Dance Haku Dai Yaori no Maki is a 3D platform game developed by Exact and Ultra, in which it was renamed to Mew Mew, and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the Sony PlayStation in 1996. It is the second game in the Jumping Flash series and a direct sequel to Jumping Flash, which was released the previous year. Jumping Flash 2 was re-released on the PlayStation Store as a downloadable game for the PlayStation Portable and PlayStation 3. Developer Exact Mew Mew Publisher Sony Computer Entertainment Platforms PlayStation Release Date 1 JP, April 26, 1996 2 NA, August 21, 1996 3 EU, October 1, 1996 Genre First Person Platformer First Person Shooter Story After Robert foils Baron Aloha's plans to take over Crater Planet, events from the first game, Aloha flees for his life and return to his home planet, Little Mew. While planning his revenge, however, Aloha's turn to face the fear of having his planet attacked comes. A gigantic alien invader known as Captain Kabuki descends upon Little Mew and starts taking it apart, piece by piece, just as Aloha himself had once tried to do to Crater Planet. Aloha flees the onslaught in his space pod, and lands on an asteroid far away from Little Mew, where he swallows his pride and calls for help from his sworn enemy, Universal City Hall. Once again, Robert is dispatched to help, and manages to free the parts of Little Mew which Kabuki has taken, and ultimately faces Kabuki one-on-one -on -one in mortal combat. Robert emerges victorious, and Kabuki flees. Aloha however, is not finished. Still carrying a grudge against Robert, he goes after Kabuki and convinces him to form a truce so that they can destroy Robert together. In exchange, Aloha will pay Kabuki a large amount of money, and Kabuki, also desiring revenge against Robert, agrees. Aloha and Kabuki attack Little Mew together, prompting Robert to take action again. Eventually, Robert and Kabuki battle each other one last time, and Robert manages to destroy Kabuki once and for all while Aloha flees for his life once again. Aloha returns to Little Mew, but is disowned by all the Mew Mews, 
who now resent him for teaming with Kabuki, who had tried to destroy them all, and trying to destroy Robert, who had saved their lives. They throw him out of the bar and tell him to never come back. Opening Sequence The opening cutscene begins with the view of deep space with asteroids everywhere. As it moves closer to the main scene, the names of developers that worked in this game fades in then fades out, exact and Mew Mew. After the Mew Mew text fades out the camera pans to an asteroid with a telephone booth installed above it, with the Baron inside, and his Mew Mew assistant right next to Baron Aloha's helicopter spaceship, then the camera points at Aloha and he says the following text. Hello, hello. Ah, yeah, are you ZE person whom is in charge of ZE Universal City Hall? Ah, good. This is ZE mad scientist Baron Aloha talking to you. Listen doctor, I have question for simple favor. The screen turns to dark for a few seconds then the screen points at the edge of the tiny planet, little Mew with the helicopter ship flying by. The narrator then comes into place. In the backwater reaches of the galaxy lies a tiny planet known as Little Mew, that is used by Baron Aloha as his secret hideout. The Baron returned to his home away from home to rejuvenate a recent beating he took at the hands of the feet of that heroic battle bunny known as Robert. While the narrator is talking, we see multiple scenes along the way, with one the camera descends into the planet's atmosphere, one with the helicopter landing and a ladder is released to assist with the departure and lastly a scene where the camera is pointing a bit to the sky while focusing on Baron's face, as he takes few steps and looks in both sides. Then a scene pops up where Aloha seen right next to a pool, in his seat standing up while using his laptop to research about his next plan to take over the universe, when suddenly a large shadow appears and covers the entire planet and a rumble effect is added during this part. The Baron looks at the sky with shock and a scared Mew comes to his back while the narrator says this. He was in the process of inventing a better, stronger, more absurd way to overthrow the universe when little Mew is visited by a stranger. In fact, there is nothing stranger in the universe than the creature known only as Captain Kabuki. Tipping the scales at a whopping 220 basal lion tons, he uses a kung fu grip larger than metropolitan Chicago to shred Little Mew and add it to his fantastic collection of bottled wonderlands. The next scene offers the player to introduce to a brand new character added into the game, Captain Kabuki. He is floating right next to Little Mew while raising both of his arms down as the camera moves up. Then it moves very close to his face in which he gives a sinister smirk before transitioning to the next scene where he is seen grabbing a piece of the planet and putting them in a glass bottle. Using his keen sense of villain timing, Baron Aloha hastily departs the scene and lands upon a small asteroid. Unable to cope with the monstrosity that is Kabuki, he calls Universal City Hall and begs for help as his beloved hideaway is made into so much Swiss cheese. A scene where Baron and his Mew Mew assistant escaping the planet is shown, then the next scene shows that the camera is back at the asteroid telephone booth scene where it slowly zooms to Aloha while he is talking with the Universal City Hall on the phone. Finally, the last few scenes shows us the ship that the Universal City Hall uses has arrived into the scene with its bottom hatch opening revealing Robert that is grabbed mid-air by a claw as it descends, then his back thruster ignited and he was released in which the camera is placed far away from the ship and Robert flies towards the camera, fading into a dark screen afterwards. After listening to the Baron's plight, the interstellar dispenser of justice decides to send the only being capable of dealing with a menace such as Captain Kabuki, the freedom-loving, robo-heroic Robert. Tuned up and ready to go the distance, Robert leaps to the scene. Gameplay The gameplay for Jumping Flash 2 is virtually identical to its predecessor. Instead of collecting 4 jet pods, Robert must rescue 4 Mew Mews in each level before exiting. Other new additions include the power orbs as an added power-up and the ability to obtain performance medals. A certain performance medal may be awarded depending on how the player completes a level. For example, playing through a single level without firing any weapons will reward the player with the Flower Child medal. There are a total of 12 medals to collect. Music Takeo Miratsu composed the game's music. Most of the tracks, along with a lot of the music from Jumping Flash, were featured on the Jumping Flash. Two original game soundtrack. Reception The game received mostly positive reviews, including an 8 tenths from IGN, a 7.8 slash 10 from GameSpot and a 4 fifths from GamePro. The game was given a 33 out of 40 by Japanese gaming magazine Wikipedia Famitsu, ranking it among the top 120 games reviewed by the publication in 2000. Captain Kabuki Captain Kabuki, Kapitan Suzuki, is a large, evil alien invader who is one of the main villains in Jumping Flash. 
two Kabuki rips apart Little Mew, home to the Mew Mews and Baron Aloha, so he can add it to his fantastic collection of bottled wonderlands. At first Kabuki was just working for himself, but he later teams up with Baron Aloha, as Robert is their common enemy. As the player finishes a world, Kabuki tends to tease Robert with bad puns. He appears to have white, cracked skin mostly on his head, narrow eyes, small thick eyebrows, and thin red lips with a dark appendage coming out from the top of his head, but his body has a light blue tint. He wears a tight, darker blue suit, a dark cape, and a frilled collar. He seems to be a mixture between a ballerina and a weightlifter. In the end, Robert will have to face him, much in a similar manner as the first game's final boss. Trivia 1. In Jumping Flash 2's credit sequence, he is introduced as Captain Tao Suzuki, which is the Portuguese word for captain. It's unclear why this made it through the sequence, since there are no other words mentioned in the game whatsoever from this language. His name is also different from Kabuki, either an alternative name or his Japanese name. Due to the Portuguese influence, it might also be a different name by region. Robert Mondio Robert Mondio, Robito Mondia, sometimes referred to as Jumping Flash. 3. Is a 3D platform game for the Sony PlayStation. It was developed by Sugar and Rockets and published by Sony Computer Entertainment and released exclusively in Japan in 1999. It is the third game in the Jumping Flash series. The game was released on the Japanese PlayStation Network on July 26, 2007. Developer Sugar and Rockets. Publisher Sony Computer Entertainment. Platforms PlayStation. Release date JP. October 14, 1999. Genre. Platform. Plot. Robert, having saved the universe and thwarted all of its evil opponents, now serves as an all-purpose problem solver in the Space City Hall. If you have a problem no matter how minute or insignificant it may be you can call Robert, and he'll come a jumpin' in to save the day, or the laundry, or the carrots, or blast open a few geysers for an old guy who wants to start a hot springs resort on a volcanic island. That's right. You heard me. Baron Aloha's reign of terror is over. The world is completely at peace now, and all that's left for a hero to do is to make sure that the people he saved are as comfortable and carefree as possible. Gameplay Upon starting the game, you are greeted with a closed book and a chorus of people screaming Robi Tu Mon Da, at the top of their lungs. Pressing start takes you to a menu with some choices, all, of course, in Japanese. You are greeted with a message from your boss, and an overhead game map at the start of the game with one lone cry for help, which constitutes a mission. As you complete missions, one of three things happens. More places pop up on the game map with more missions to do, more missions pop up in the same places you already played missions at, or, in very rare cases, nothing at all happens. As you start a mission, you get a note from the person slash people in distress, with a very long message, and then a note from your boss. Then you have a cutscene which further explains your mission from the horse's mouth, aka the distress caller. After that, you get a card with your mission objective, and the mission begins. The game itself plays much like any other jumping flash game. You get cool super jumping powers, a front mounted gun for shooting at enemies, and a few fun to use firecrackers, which are unlockable. There's also a carryover from the first and second game super mode, a deadly fall ability, which makes the screen go all blurry and speeds your decent for massive damage. It runs on a battery, and you can only use it once before it dies and needs to charge up again. Reception Robert Monview was generally well received by fans, but less than its predecessors. It was given a 31 out of 40 by gaming publication Famitsu. The game was given a 5.4 out of 10 by the website GameSpot, citing it as a disappointing sequel to the series. Pocket Mew Mew Pocket Mew Mew, Pokedamumu, is a spin-off the Jumping Flash series. Developed by Sugar and Rockets and published by Sony Computer Entertainment, it was released in 1999 for the PlayStation. The game was released on the Japanese PlayStation Network on August 6, 2014. Developer Sugar and Rockets Publisher Sony Computer Entertainment Platforms PlayStation Release date. JP, February 4, 1999. Genre. Action. Gameplay. 
Pocket Mew Mew plays very differently from the other three games in the Jumping Flash series. The player collects money by playing various mini games and uses it to purchase and add things to their amusement park. Reception Pocket Mew Mew received mixed reviews upon its release. It was given a 28 out of 40 by gaming publication Famitsu. Thanks all for your attention, and best of luck. Take care.